What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today we're going to be going over some new arrivals at Blade HQ. I actually haven't done new arrivals at Blade HQ for a while now. It's been maybe a month. So yeah, let's look over this stuff. Metal Complex, why would we need to sit here and watch you do this when we can just go to Blade HQ's new arrival page and do it ourselves? You can, you're right. Uh, you don't have to sit here and listen to me. In fact, for your convenience, I will link this page directly at the top of my description, right down under this video. So you can click this page and you can go through it yourself. Um, or you can stick around and listen to my commentary. I'm gonna point out things that I think are interesting. I will link uh, some of the things that I think are super interesting uh, individually down below so you can go right to them. Of course, you can also go to this page and find them for yourself. Either way, links are down there if you wanna use them. Thanks to my generous patrons who are supporting me. There's a link for Patreon down there as well. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. So I'm recording this at, uh, it is 1148 Central Standard Time on Friday, November 5th. You guys are seeing this on Saturday, probably Saturday morning. Um, so if there's more stuff, there might be more stuff here now. But this guy just dropped. I posted uh, on my community tab. I said, hey, I noticed that this populated on Blade HQ. Um, and people said, yeah, actually on their Facebook page, they said it was going to be Friday at 10 Mountain Time or 11 Central for me, uh, noon Eastern, right? Um, so this is pretty cool. M4, Native Chief. It might still be around by the time you guys are watching this. That doesn't look like they're flying out of there, but this is a good knife. It's a gigantic back lock, uh, nine inches overall. This is, I, I've, I've reviewed this knife. It's a good knife. I recommend the design. If you like M4 and Jade, well, there you go. You can get it for 170 bucks. I don't think that's terrible. Um, I know people are spider go pricing. It's really, uh, compared to some of the other brands out there that are really like hammering down the prices and just, tr you know, trying to sell us ridiculous stuff for a ridiculous price. Like, no, spider Co's not anywhere close to that in my book. The Civivi Brad Zinker Bow, I believe I have reviewed this. It is a good knife. Is this something different? Did they do something different with this knife? Or is this just the actual release? No, okay, $65 Nitro V, straightforward, simple, minimalist EDC knife. Nitro V is a great steal for 65 bucks. In fact, Nitro V is a great steal. At It's kind of like how I feel about CPM 154. Nitro V is just a good steal. You will see Nitro V on really expensive knives and you'll also see it on cheap knives. It's just a good composition, right? Moving on here, the Civivi Relic, I have not handled that, I don't think. Uh, 72 bucks, let's find out what's going on here. Nitro V, okay, we have a liner lock. Nothing too spicy going on here uh, with uh, Civivi at the moment. This is kind of interesting and I have, uh, I say Civivi, oh, I'm sorry, with the with the relic. The relic looks okay. I'm sure it's great, right? <laughs> this looks kind of interesting to me. Do we need a Civivi knife with a little multi-tool? No, but it is different. Overall length is 10.4, really? 10.43 inches? I thought this was a little tiny guy. Nitro V. Is the tool made out of Nitro V as well? <laughs> cool clip. It's a front flipper. Is the tool a front flipper? <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Okay, that's kind of neat. I mean, again, do we need it? No, but is it different? Yeah, I mean, you know what? 7225 Nitro V, there's a little tool. Okay, yeah, save your uh, save your knife for those people who are like, my knife's my screwdriver and it's my hammer, it's my boat anchor, it's my grappling hook, it's my kitchen sink. Dumb, use the tool. <laughs> there's a tool on this one that you can use, right? Oh boy, I'm sure I just made a, a bunch of people mad. Uh, the Wii Smooth Sentinel. Hmm. It's a frame lock. Let's take a look. CPM 20 CV. Uh, this is, I, this has got to stop. This, uh, stamped out clip thing. On a $200, like, li the knife looks good. And it's not just Wii who's guilty of this. Um, 200 bucks, 20 CV, titanium carbon fiber. Check, check, check. Good, good, good. Pocket clip? Mm-mm. That needs to be 3D milled. That is a Civivi-esque pocket clip. I'm sure it's made out of titanium. I just don't like that. So is the hinder guy who has no problem with hinder's clip. I don't like it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think hinder's clip is the spiciest thing out there. I wish that it was something different. 
Uh, <laughs> Strider's guilty of that. Chris Reeve is uh, knives also guilty. Yeah, they're titanium, but those are simple clips, right? If I'm going to spend that kind of money, I think it should be a 3D milled titanium clip. The Wii Roxy 3 looks awesome. Been trying to get that from Wii. Flip back around. Wii, I know I just uh, said nasty things about your pocket clips, but I'd really like to review one of these. <laughs> I do like Wii and Civivi, but I'm a reviewer. I have to be honest about the things that I don't like or nobody will ever believe me about, I have to point that stuff out. I can't just be like, everything's great, oh, rainbows, right? No, if I don't like something, I'm gonna say it. But I do like Wii and Civivi knives. They've, they've done, I think the Roxy is a good example of a knife that is, um, oh, this is an in-betweeny. Uh, they had a big one, they had a small one, and now we've got an in-between one. Yeah, this is a cool clip, right? Doesn't make, the most sense in the whole world. I also wish that the, listen, CPM S35 Vienna is a fine composition, right? Makes us all feel better, even though like, it's funny, like in some situations, S35 VN might actually be better, depending on the use, than a steel like 20 CV. But at $230, 20 CV makes us feel good, right? That's what it's all about. Scratching that itch and having the itch go away. <laughs> you don't want to be left itchy. S35 VN is fine. I just, we're, it's kind of, we're seeing it on, uh, it is still a super steel, right? As much as I hate using that word, um, we're just seeing it on less expensive stuff, right? But you just made an argument about Nitro V. You'll see it on more or less expensive things. I don't know. It's weird. It's weird how the brain like picks and chooses what it wants to, how, how it wants the puzzle to fit together, right? <laughs> Metal Complex doesn't know how he feels about S35VN is what you should take away from this. S35 Vienna is a great steal. I wish that it was 20 CV just to kind of get in line with the $200 production foreign uh, frame lock thing, right? Uh, 7.2 inches. I would imagine that will work out well considering the ergonomic lines of this thing. I love the opening hole. I love the kind of pseudo strider kind of look, but it's still doing its own thing. And I love that they put a 3D milled pocket clip on there. That's great. Okay, let's go back. Have much faster internet, guys. Mm, internet much faster now here. Uh, the Red Horse Hellraiser, which I reviewed and actually really liked. I would, I don't like the carbon fiber ones as much as I think I would like the G10 ones just because, now this is a different type of carbon fiber though. So we, this is more, this isn't the marble stuff. I think you'd probably be okay with it. Marble and shred seems to have, you know, the a variance, a wide fluctuating level of voids, more or less. Um, this is the automatic, which is pretty cool. That's a pretty <laughs> mega tactical kind of, it still have, I don't, I still don't like the stamped out clips for that much money, even though this is, by the way, if you didn't know, made in the United States. Where does it, does it not say? Yeah, the Hellraiser P is a US made knife. I don't know why Blade HQ is not showing it here. They should be. And it's S35VN, right? What's he going to say now? He likes that one, right? It's made in the USA. <laughs> ah, I wish that it was M390 as well. I think that would be better. But that thing's made in the US, right? So it's there's it, it costs more to create that. I don't know. It's there. The M4 940, still available. That's a good 940 to get for sure. Victorinox SD Classics, if you like the see-through you know, color. If I was going to buy one of these, I would buy a, a color. What color is this? Polluted beach. Hold on. Get out of here. What color is this? <laughs> well, tan. Ooh. <laughs> it looks like cream of mushroom soup. Okay, maybe that's your color, right? Maybe that's your color. All right. Boost Blade Smoke 2. Looks interesting. I made a post about these the other day. These were really, the Boost uh, Blade Smoke was really popular. I've not handled the two yet. Looks nice. The first one was nice, so there you go. QSP Parrot. I've heard a lot of people talking about this one. Uh, yeah, that's $28.85 for uh, three inches of D2. Sure, you can't, this is fine. Here's the type of knife where I'm like, yeah, simple clip, no problem. I don't have a problem with that. This looks like a nice knife. If you're on a budget, you want a nice knife, QSP. 
Uh, go for it. I don't think this is a new model. People have just been asking me, like, are you going to review that? Uh, that's a pretty straightforward knife. I, I will, um, but that that's like a 10-minute review with me going, this seems pretty good. That's I can almost guarantee that's how it's going to be. Uh, 20 CV Kaiser Azo Vanguard Bag Glitter 20 CV. Yeah, okay. The Bag Glitter is a great model. 20 CV for 99 bucks is pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, that's one of the better deals on 20 CV out there right now. And it's also the reason where I'm like, you know, why can't we get the more expensive stuff in 20? Like Kaiser can do a hundred dollar bag glitter in 20 CV, right? That doesn't mean that I'm saying that all knives that are, you know, that are in 20 CV should be under a hundred dollars. People have a really hard time with the whole materials equal value thing. There are so many other elements that go into a knife than just the materials. This knife, titanium and M390, why 700 should be 100 because Kaiser Begliter also 100. 20 CV, same thing, same value. No, that is not how that works. Uh, different amounts of time and energy and human involvement go into uh Knives. So you're, you know, relating a small shop to a big shop, a uh, shop that is uh, foreign, you know, if you live in the United States or a shop that's here in the USA, right? If you've got 100 people working on knives or if you've got two people working on knives, right? The materials, of course, your machines, the cost of your, all of that. There's so many, so many things you have to factor in. So you can't, it's not a static value system. Flytanium crossfade scales for um, the mini bug out. So I have some right here on my bug out. You guys, uh, if you want to, you can watch me assemble it. These uh, fit together perfectly and they are very nice. For 64 bucks, yeah, make your mini bug out titanium. Or for $40, make it um, micarta. Or for $60, uh, kill the whole point of the mini bug out and the, <laughs> throw the balance off. <laughs> It's some super heavy, I mean, you know, whatever. It's your money. Do what you want, right? If you think it'd look cool, then do it. I've done that before. It's fun. I got to admit, this looks interesting. Boker can be really hit or miss uh, in terms of fit and finish. Oh, my gosh. They did a carbon fiber one. I did not know that. <laughs> Is that uh, marble? <laughs> Is that? Hang on. Oh, it's a G10, shredded black carbon fiber overlay, G10. So it's that laminate stuff. All right. Well, it doesn't look very good. <laughs> I got to admit, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't look very good. Speaking of things that just don't sit right with the eyes. I'm sure that this works exactly as it is intended. I would hope that it is not used in a way that they did not intend. I, I think that's all I'm going to say. Are we getting back to stuff that I've already seen? Boy, this has been a crazy like month and a half for the knife world because um, that's kind of part of the reason why I waited to do new arrivals. Um at uh, at Blade HQ because there just wasn't a lot of new stuff. So let me talk about this. This initially, now I handled a custom one of these a long time ago. You can go back and check out my review of the Jason Clark custom Spanish tip razor. Um, I thought, I was like, okay, so Bestek did a production version of this, all right. Uh, this is really nice. It's it's very nice. Uh, now, obviously, you know, We've, we've gone through the uh, the phase of the knife world where everybody was into the cleavers, right? The flipper cleavers. Obviously, you know, for a lot of people, that cleaver style blade is going to be less utilitarian for general EDC. This is something that you pick up just because you like the look of. There's nothing crazy going on here. There's nothing like overly, you know, innovative going on here. It's pretty straightforward. It's a titanium liner lock with actual titanium bolsters. Uh, there's a steel lock bar insert on the titanium liner lock. There's a 3D milled pocket clip. Uh, micarta, and you're looking at M390 steel, right? Looks pretty straightforward. If you like the aesthetic of this, you will love this knife. 
I oh, I unboxed it and I was like, this is freaking nice. This is really well done. I I mean it. This is a cool knife. It's not. It's obviously not going to be for everybody. But you know, if you just want to carry something cool, this is cool. It's it's a little bit different than other stuff that we see right now. Now, especially now that the whole cleaver phase has kind of ended, right? Boy, look at this freaking thing. The Max Ace Red Queen. <laughs> oh, man. That is just crazy. <laughs> Let me see this. What is this? Okay. I'm not sure how I feel about the carbon fiber on this. There's a lot going on here. Um, let me, let's read. Features, satin finished blade in a Hawkbill style made from M390 Super Steel. Super Steel! Bronze titanium handle with gold accents and gold marbled carbon fiber inlays. A lot of work, a lot of detail going into something like this, right? No, it's not made in the United States, but there's still a lot going on here. Max Ace Knives Red Queen 3 is an ergonomic folding knife. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Uh, made with masterful attention to detail. There, there are a lot of details in there. Where the knife really shines is its superbly milled titanium handle. From backspacer to pivot to pocket clip. Its hawkbill style blade, it fitted, typo, is fitted with a pair of titanium catches that fit seamlessly together. They facilitate rapid blade deployment right out of the pocket if you choose to snag them on your pants. Okay, so that's what's going on here. <laughs> I mean, okay, you know, that's fine. Um, it looks like it's well made and it looks, it's just crazy looking. But that, but you know what? I'm glad stuff like this exists. We got too much boring stuff going on in the knife world, right? Now, they didn't, they didn't reinvent the wheel here. You know, we got a pseudo Emerson wave. I've said pseudo twice in this video now. Ugh. Is, is, is that his new word? <laughs> Um, look at the, uh, over travel. They use this thing. There's a lot of, you know, it's almost like they borrowed some ideas with Kershaw's weird space garbage plating system. Um, <laughs> but you know, it's, it's neat. So can this be like removed this whole thing? Is it an inlay or is it like a separate, not an inlay? I don't understand. Okay. Let's keep reading. This folder is a well-built masterpiece with unique flair and some serious utility. There's some serious flair and utility going on in the description here. But you know what? I've I've seen some cool stuff come out of Max Ace. And of course I love Blade HQ. I'm not I'm not mocking them. Um so okay, if you like it, there you go. It can be yours for 300 bucks. Um, yeah, I think we're probably getting back into some of the space where we've already looked over this. So, um, should we check out coming soon real quick? I'm sure there are still Microtech SOCOM elites that are coming soon that don't have pictures. Come on. I just said my internet was fast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same. Uh, um, what is this? Oh, it's a button lock flipper from Civivi. Okay, all right, hold on. Let's look at this. You got one without serrations? There we go. Geminy, creaminy. Um, all right. How about this black one? Uh, I like that. Oh, boy. Ooh, did I look at this last time? I don't think so. Yeah, okay, 7.88 inches overall with a 3.47 inch blade of Sandvik 14C 28N steel, the arguably the best budget steel in existence um, for 70 bucks, button lock. Okay, I think that's neat. What is this called? The cogent, the cogent, the cogent? I don't know, I don't know how to pronounce that. That looks pretty neat. Well, there's something um, for you fidgety folks who like Civivi knives. I will um, definitely uh, check that one out. Uh, you know what? I think that's going to be pretty much it today. This is always fun. Uh, oh, the, uh, pff, pff, there's new stuff here just now. <laughs> 
Protec custom SBRs. Oh, these will probably be freaking gone. What? Right in the middle of a video. These will be gone before you guys see this. I'm sorry. I refreshed the page and they had new stuff. Those are kind of neat. All right, we'll look at them here real quick. I mean, that's not, it's pointless. I mean, maybe they'll still be here. I don't know, check. Those are an S35VN, but and this is a US automatic. So a little bit different pricing system. What on earth is going on with the, are these titanium? Blue Chevron Micarta. The Protec SPR is a smaller, lighter, blah, 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 blah. What is the material here? Because maybe it's aluminum. Maybe I just got confused there. I bet this is aluminum, and then they have some interesting, um, this is just interesting, um, uh, micarta. And then you have the pearl inlay. Okay, pretty cool. Uh, if they're there, then there you go. These are pretty unique. I've never seen anything like that before. Um, so sorry, uh, I, <laughs> it, they populated it in the middle of the, why did I click on that? They populated in the middle of the video. Anyways, guys, I hope that, uh, maybe you found something that you were interested in. Like I said, there will be links for your convenience on a few of these items down below. If I didn't link the item specifically, you can simply click on the first link, which takes you right to this page and you can go back through and find whatever it is you're looking for. I do appreciate it. Um, if you use my links, that would mean uh, the world to me, but as is the case, as is the case, sound like a Chandler from Friends. Um, as is always the case, that is entirely up to you. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.